Dundee, Scotland, my great-grandfather's family, they were upper middle class, and he fell in love and wanted to get married. The family was against it. They got married anyway because he married below his station. They were ostracized, so they came to Canada. He had a good business in Canada till the stock market crash. But she was a force to be reckoned with. They lived in downtown Toronto. They had a very colorful life. They drank, they loved, they fought. They went to the emergency room together to get patched up. <laughs> then they got religion. They didn't drink anymore. They probably still fought, but they didn't drink anymore. <laughs> there were a lot of traveling men who drank. And they probably drank together at one point, but it was dangerous to be drunk and unprotected. So she always provided a safe place for them to not necessarily drink, but to sleep it off. And it was at the back shed at, the, at their house. But there was one man who came by every November and he baked shortbread cookies for her and baked them on top of the wood stove, not in the wood stove. And every year he would just show up and, and then one year he just stopped coming. So never knew his name or anything about, but he was a wonderful baker. And this was his way of saying thank you. And Graham always made sure he had a bottle <laughs> and a safe, a safe place. Yeah, that's my Graham. <laughs> but mum continued to make them every year, usually end of November. And she put them all in little tins, card on top saying how many shortbreads were in this tin. She'd tape them shut. And this was to put the fear of God in us that she knew how many cookies were in that tin and there better be that many when she opened them up. Three years ago, we were talking about these cookies. She said, well, she just put any old number down. She never counted them. <laughs> she got us. <laughs> and we, we were always too afraid to even try to sneak one. 